What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Welcome back. Hopefully everyone is having an amazing Thursday. We are just one day closer to a pay day Friday. And what else does that mean? It means the weekend is here. I can't wait. Now listen, I sit here as I make this video, I got a lovely ice pack on my quad once again because you guessed it. I tweaked it last night. The same one that I pulled, it was a complete tear up by the hip. I'm icing it. I don't think it's pulled. I just think it's probably a little sore from using it last night and running around like a complete savage on the field. I'm hoping I'm going to be good. I'm going to take it easy tonight in the men's softball opener. But I'm not happy about this. I'm not excited. This is the last thing that I wanted. I'm actually going to be running out to the store today. I'm going to buy some compression underwear. Hopefully that helps hold that muscle in and together. I just got to take care of it, folks. I don't like it. Um, really hurts part of my game. As you know, I'm a, I'm a speed guy and this just takes it away. I don't know what's going on and I don't even want to hear him getting old because I'm not getting old. So don't even, don't even come at me with that. But listen, in this video, we're going to continue talking about XRP the old, and the AMA that we spoke about in video one. If you didn't watch that, give it a listen because we're going to cover this more into depth. Because what do I think is about to go down? What do I think is happening here? It's very simple. I think we are seeing everything line up. But when this lawsuit finally does come to an end, we are going to see true utility come to the XRP ledger and to XRP itself. So let's jump into this thing because we're going to show you the second part of that clip from David Schwartz. It is a doozy. You don't want to miss it. Bitcoin still $19,345. Third floating above 1600 XRP is coming in at the number seven spot at the 333. That is 33 cents, folks. We've seen a little bit of green. Nice to see the cryptocurrency market cap above one trillion dollars, but it's also kind of nice to see the Bitcoin dominance has dropped and it continues to drop to 36.95 percent. All eyes on that. Now, who can tell me what this is? Well, you probably can, but you can probably see the title in there. Five days and eight hours until the XLS 20 amendment is passed on the XRP ledger, folks. I got this ticker over in the Discord. You probably want to get to the Discord. I'm just saying, it's free. I don't know why you're not in there. Tons of valuable information. But five days from now, we're looking at September 13th. If none of these votes swip, uh, swap back over and cause us to drop under an 80% consensus, we are getting NFTs on the XRP ledger. Everything's looking good, but I'll tell you, it seems like this clock is moving in slow motion to me. Now, I'm going to remind you, and I'm only going to remind you so many more times because the island is selling out. Two plots gone, four plots, over 75% sold. Play to earn games. Yes, games are coming to the Lux Lions NFTs. You will be earning as you play. And the beauty of it is you're going to be playing for free. You need to get over. You need to get some Lux Lion NFTs. You need to get some land in the metaverse. There is a lot cooking and a lot brewing. I heard September leading into October is going to be nothing but crazy announcements. That is what I'm hearing. But what do I know? It's not like it's my project or anything. Now we revisited the Bitcoin chart in my earlier video. Now we're going to look at my man Jay's chart. Because this is what he's telling you. Every time we have seen a daily candle close below that trend line. We have seen a 28 to 32 to 40 percent crash. What just happened? We had a BTC close below the trend line, folks. Look, upper left, you see what happens. Right in the middle, you see what happens. Bada beam, bada boom, bottom right. What do you think? History repeats itself. It's all setting up for a BTC crash. You've seen the dominance go down. I told you my Bitcoin target. 10 to 14,000, folks. It's going to happen. Could we go up in the meantime before we come back down? Of course. Of course. But the end of this. Bitcoin's going down and XRP is going to rise at some point. You just be patient. Now, here's a here's a beautiful, beautiful quote from Navin Goop that I'll never forget. Ripple is not an ordinary company. We are not here to make us have a small market share or make a small amount of money. We are here to make a dent in the universe. That is what I'm talking about. You make that dent because I'm going to be standing here the whole time. Now, I want to get into part two, talking about these automated market makers from David Schwartz because you need to listen up, open those ears, clean them out, sit back, and let Schwartz take you to the promised land and think about all of the exciting things that are coming. 
We want arbitragers to work quicker. We want arbitragers, we don't want arbitragers to make the pool suffer such large losses. So what we did is we gave a designated arbitrager who pays a fee for this execution privileges that will allow them to arbitrage more rapidly than anybody else will. And if they're diligent, they should be able to capture a significant fraction of the arbitrage opportunity. Because the pool sells this privilege, it should reap as its own profit a significant fraction of what the arbitrage would make. So say you can make $100 a day arbitraging against a pool, and I can make $100 a day arbitraging against that same pool. We'll compete, right? We'll bid for that, and maybe I'll bid you know, $90. And now the pool just made $90 and I only made $10 instead of the pool losing $100 and me making it. So the pool charges for arbitrage rights. And it does it using its own liquidity tokens as the currency by which you buy these arbitrage slots. And it destroys them when they're paid to the pool. So arbitragers who want those arbitrage slots have to acquire liquidity tokens either by putting money into the pool or buying them from other people. And then they're destroyed. And if there are fewer liquidity tokens outstanding, the value of each one goes up because it's a claim against the assets of the pool. Now, another thing that happens is volatility. So external prices change, right? The price of XRP changes, the price of Bitcoin changes. That means the value of the assets the pool holds changes. And that drives up both arbitrage activity. There's only an opportunity to arbitrage if the price is out of whack. One source of the price being out of whack would be changes in the price. But also natural ledger activity, people making payments and offers. All of these things trade against the AMM instance, and the AMM makes a spread. But there's something else going on that's almost more exciting, which is volatility is harvested by the automated market maker. Normally, volatility just results in risk and a reduction in yield. But here, it's a gain in yield. The automated market maker actually implements a trading strategy that converts volatility into yield. I could go on for a very long time about that, but I'm not going to because it's going to take us way in the weeds. But if you see me, again, if you see me outside, trading strategies are something that I'm very, very interested in. If you think about what an automated market maker does, when the price goes up, it sells, and when the price goes down, it buys. That strategy, if you imagine, if you hold Apple stock and the price goes up and you sell, and then the price goes back down and you buy, you make a profit. If the price goes down and you buy and the price goes back up, you make a profit, and you sell, you make a profit. That's what an automated market maker does all day long. In addition, the automated market maker leverages the XRP ledger's inherent advantages. The XRP ledger has very, very fast transactions. The XRP ledger has very, very low transaction cost. These are things that will drive up the revenue and the efficiency of the automated market maker. So if the price of XRP goes up or down, and then it comes back in just a few seconds, if you were on a blockchain like Ethereum, there's no way that you could harvest that volatility because your transactions take several minutes to confirm. There's just no way that you can make that work. But because it is so fast, the trading algorithm can convert yield, uh, convert volatility into yield much, much more rapidly. Higher transaction fees mean that arbitragers wait to transact. If the transaction fee is $13 and you're only going to make $10, you don't submit the transaction, right? You have no choice but to wait. But because the transaction fees are so low on the XRP ledger and the transactions are so fast, that means arbitraging is going to be more efficient and the pool is going to be able to capture more volatility for yield. XRPL's low transaction fees, high transaction fees make arbitraging so much more competitive and so much faster that it reduces the pool's arbitrage losses and increases the pool's volatility gain. Lastly, the XRP ledger doesn't have block producers. Block producers, if you know what, anybody know what MEV is? So these are block producers who are finding ways to essentially front run. It would be illegal anywhere else, right? Miners, stakers, block producers, whatever you call them, can front run AMM transactions. But you can't do that on the XRP ledger because there aren't miners, stakers, or block producers. The consensus process doesn't allow any party to be the dictator of the moment to run the block. This makes arbitrage slots more valuable and should increase the returns on the continuous auctions, resulting in more liquidity token destruction and more yield. One of the disadvantages of holding assets like XRP and Bitcoin is their volatility. Right, why do we have stable coins? Because volatile assets are like hard to hold and use. I'm hopeful that this combination of features in the AMM specification will turn that disadvantage into a significant advantage. AMMs will harvest volatility for yield. Volatility will drive market makers, which the AMM makes a spread, right? If the price of Bitcoin stays at $20,000, eventually everybody who wants to buy at $20,000 is bought and everybody who wants to sell at $20,000 is sold. It takes a movement in price to really drive that volume. 
And of course, volatility increases arbitrage of profits because the AMM gets more out of balance more, and the AMM gets a cut of those profits through the auction mechanism. All right, let's let's recap what he just said here. The AMM is going to convert the volatility into yield. When a price goes up, it sells. When a price goes down, it buys. But the XRP ledger is so fast it can handle all these transactions that it's going to turn the volatility into an advantage. Volatility is what drives the market makers, folks. This is a freaking game changer. Listen to this right here. This sums it up very, very well. Start right here. Create an environment that will promote Ripple Net dominance. When there is a pool of liquidity built into the system, we won't need buyers to be waiting for sellers, which makes the on-demand liquidity transactions more seamless slash efficient. Along with that, there are custom unique features built into the amendment that have never been seen before in crypto. Every DEX, AMA, and Overbook can be connected to and utilized as if they were. Example one, operators may be executed better on the XRP Ledger DEX in this event. The execution will be routed to the path of a least resistant point that will offer the user the best practice. Impairment loss and arbitrage is one of the biggest issues with liquidity pools. The XLS 30D amendment fixes this by auctioning off the rights to the first mover advantage to arbitrage. It's like passing out VIP passes to the front of the lines of Disney. Why is it important? Because we have high level of arbitrage that affects the level of loss. To the VIP passes come at a cost to the arbitrageur. The arbitrageur has to pay a fee to get the opportunity. These fees are then transferred to the liquidity pool participants. We talked about in the first video. The liquidity providers get rewarded and anyone can provide liquidity. This function keeps the cost low to the user and this would include the on-demand liquidity transactions. So now we have settlement speeds from preloaded pools that may retire order book on-demand liquidity transactions deep into liquidity pools with a very, very minimal risk to slippage to participate or boost the rewards in a unique way to crypto. Whichever way we want to look at this or spin this, they have positioned the XRP Ledger and RippleNet to be the leader. The leader in cryptocurrency and digital assets. We put everything in a level playing field. RippleNet and the XRP Ledger wins with using XRP. This is why, folks. This is why the governments, the financial institutions, the banks are all looking at Ripple and their software suite. That's going to do it for me. Listen, enjoy the rest of your day. It's almost Friday. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.